Hey guys, we're Dave and Ashley Willis with Marriage Today, and we're continuing the conversation today on what it means to have a loving family, a loving family built on God's definition of love. Because we live in a world that's taken that word love and redefined it to mean a lot of different things. And most of us, some of us at least, just look at it as nothing more than a, a fickle feeling that we fall into or fall out of. But God's definition of love, used by the word agape in the Bible, is selfless, it's permanent, it's committed, it's rooted in action. And that's the kind of love God has for us as part of his family, and that's the kind of love he has for us in our families. And so, sweetie, what are some things we can do to have that kind of loving relationship in our family? For those who are watching, we all want that. We all want a loving family, but how do we get there? I think number one, it starts with just serving one another. And this is gonna start by serving your spouse because your kids are watching. I mean, they are watching everything. And a great way to teach your kids how to serve each other, you know, if they have siblings and to be, you know, self-sacrificing to their parents is by how their parents do it to one another. And so go to your spouse and, and just do those things that you did in the beginning and serve them. You know, if you know they love it when you make their coffee in the morning, do that for them and just say, you know, I hope you have a great day. Here's your coffee this morning. You know, one thing Dave has always done for me since we've been early, in the early years of our marriage, was he knows I love foot rubs. So almost every oh, yeah. night, he gives me a foot rub and it's the most amazing thing. He's become quite good at it. So I'm quite good. He can I don't add like brag, foot masseuse to his resume. And I practice. love that. I love that. But you know, our boys, we have four boys and they are watching how their dad is serving their mom. And I just love that. And I love it because it feels good to me, but I love it because my boys are learning what it's like to have self-sacrificing love and to give that to your spouse. I rub you because I love you. That's, Thank you. It's just your rub language. She doesn't have a love language. She has a rub language. I do, I do. So her feet are very well taken care of, and that's <laughs> something that, that is a priority. So serve each other. That's great advice. I would say number two is to forgive each other. You know, don't yes, keep yes. score of grudges. Don't, don't play that game, but forgive freely. Love and grace go hand in hand. And so don't treat the people in your family the way they treat you. Treat them the way God treats you. Yeah. God gives us his best when we're at our worst. He forgives us when when we've we've blown it. And then he says, "Now I want you to go love each other in this same kind of way." And so that isn't just giving a free free pass to to people to be reckless and hurtful in your family. Absolutely. There have to be boundaries. There often have to be consequences even, but forgiveness, forgiveness has to be at the forefront of it. Of them knowing, "Look, grace grace lives here because love lives here." That's so true. And I think another thing we need to do is assume the best of one another. And that means when it comes to our spouse and our kids, you know, don't assume the worst. I think sometimes, especially in marriage, we can kind of just know how to get one another and, and hit each other the wrong way. And we need to instead, you know, look for the good things. Try to see the good things in your spouse and you'll really find what you're looking for. And in the same way, we need to do this with our kids. If you see them doing something right, point it out to them and tell them, you know, I just love the way that you take care of your schoolwork and you do such a great job there. You know, I just love how you are so sweet to your other siblings. I just love that about you. Or if you're talking to your spouse, say, you know, you work so hard for this family and you do it and you don't even ask for any kind of attention over it. And I just love how hard you work for this family. And be an encourager. I mean, that's 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 what Ashley's saying here. This is what the Bible says. It says, be encouraging to one another, build each other up. Don't tear each other down. Right. But don't be each other's biggest critic, be each other's biggest encourager. Don't point out all the things they're doing wrong, but look for the good, because whatever yes. you're looking for is what you're gonna find. So if you're always looking for something to encourage, you'll see it in your kids, you'll see it in your spouse. But if all you're looking for are the flaws, you'll see it and, and you'll be pointing it out and it'll create a negative dynamic in your marriage. The tone of your words will create the tone of your family. And so speak words of life to one another. And that's in that you're speaking love. You're showing love. You are. Thank you all so much for joining us. If you wanna connect with us online, we would love that. Just go to marriagetoday.com. We'll talk to you soon.